Hello, welcome and welcome back. This is Jacob and today we're going to be picking up a new uh, narration series for the currently live and airing event in Arknights called A Light Spark in Darkness. Uh, okay, uh, in case, well, for obvious reasons, if new people bump into this, uh, just to clarify, this is both a narration and uh, I am also doing some amateur voice acting for the characters yes all of them that are appearing besides the generic characters that are just getting generic voices but in general this is going to be fully voiced completely uh and also i would like to point out events like these are probably my favorite form of how these are structured especially for these videos so far i've did, did two of these on uh, the channel and uh i love it this is pretty much amazingly split six entries individual entries and um they are all gonna be um three episodes <laughs> do the math uh one thing when i was opening these yesterday well earlier today rather uh i noticed something this last one is called and i no, i'm jumping here i'm not opening it opening it for this episode i just want to point out this one is called ring a ding ding uh now i obviously haven't read it yet considering the new sticker is still there but why why is that ringing a bell well go over here go over here go over there click this thing hmm let us ring a ding ding now i'm very confused why two different uh stories have the same almost the same title if someone can clarify if this is supposed to be like a saying or something that would make more sense uh but i am not familiar with it so if someone knows you can tell me but yeah anyway uh this series will be three episodes long in total today's first episode will will feature uh the first two parts which are titled maybe and anywhere i wonder so without further ado uh i would say let's get into it shall we with the first part titled maybe before i start this thing let me bump up the game volume slightly uh also also one final thing before we start uh in case the audio sounds off for people who have watched my content so far, uh, I was using, when the patch dropped, I was using uh, LD Player 64 bit version, yada yada. Uh, and for some reason, the game kept crashing on it. So I was like, well, screw it. I might as well now tr try uh, LD Player 9, and it's running fine for now. Uh, well, one thing that is very nice with this one, considering I love to play this game in uh, widescreen mode because it bumps the bottom here slightly up so I don't have to literally stare at the bottom line of the goddamn monitor. Uh, but the background is very nicely black now, which might actually look better for uh, YouTube videos. So, uh, but yeah, anyway, because it's a new player, sounds do seem a bit weird to me i don't know if it's the player of or if they updated the sound engine for the game or sound mixing rather uh some sounds sounded off so if on your guys's end something seems up just type it in the comments because i can pretty much not really hear it during the recordings but yeah that's all i wanted to say so <clears throat> let's uh let's actually begin pardon <coughs> nightfall the rumble of Virginium boilers has yet to cease. Thick plumes of smoke gush out of the towering chimneys. The workmen take over their worn-out protective gear and hand it off to the next shift. The day is near against end here in Caledon. November 16th, 10.97, 9.50pm. 
Nine in the evening is when the infected factory nearby changes shifts. Many of the workmen uh, choose to kill time by uh, paying in Squarkus' shop a visit. There is not much the shop has to offer to its patrons. A crude fried thin cutlet, a bowl of tasteless potato soup, and a mug of fruit wine flavored water. <laughs> and yet the shop has garnered a few regulars. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> Here's the brandy. Hey, Sparky! Another pint. Here you go, your fruit wine. So, what's going on? Why is everybody so cheery? Miss Brandy just gave us all a bonus along with our payslips for the month. They say it's a bonus, but it's just a hundred pence. And considering they work us to the bone, that's the least they could owe us. You sure you should be here at this hour, though? I got a beating from the missus. Drug on. I'm the king of the castle. She would dare. Alright, here's to the king of the castle. Cheers. Hey, Sparky. Another pint. <laughs> Mr. James, you really should watch your drink, though. You wouldn't want to upset uh, Mrs. James. Sparky, I heard from your boss. You've got uh, something stronger than this piss. Get us some of that. Not happening. Remember what Miss Quarkus told you. Strong drink is bad for your condition. You need to take better care of yourself, Stone. Ah, uh, come on, what's the problem? This disease is a death sentence. Might as well get the taste of the hard stuff before we crack. Don't say that. The doctors in the city told us a rip of it progress the first... Uh, the, uh, a rip of it progresses differently depending on the patient's physical condition. Uh, lighten up, I'm just... Stone! Uh, uh, yep. Take care of yourself and live to the fullest. Stop saying that word all the time. Uh, um, sorry? Look at you. You got Sparky upset. <sighs> I didn't mean to. Huh, looks like we got some... we got quite a crowd today. Good evening, Mr. Root. Oi, if it isn't Bitter Root. Come on, come on, let's drink. Huh, something to celebrate today. Caladon's infected community is home to many a peculiar man, and Bitter Root counts amongst them. Mr. Root works for an organization called Road Island, is a professional hired by the Lords of the City Council. By the way, Rhode Island treats the infected, oh, uh, but the way Rhode Island treats the infected boggles the mind. Rhode Island will assist the Caledon City Council and provide medical assistance to all infected, set their public address. Why would anyone willingly help the infected, especially when they're not even from here? How's work today, but? Didn't often you get the free time to come for a drink. It's fine, we heard a few extra pair of hands. Things calm down quite a bit, thanks to them. Eh? Is that good work uh, working for Rhode Island? Do they pay well? What of it? You interested? Ah, forget I said anything. I can't even read. I'd just be making a fool of myself. At first, no one in the... Infected community trusted them. There were even rumors that they were here to take uh, the late stage infected away for experiments. But Rhode Island proved themselves with their actions. They really are here to help. Be it a regular or ripofy infection checkup, acute or ripofy attack treatment, or even just a normal workplace injury, you just walk into their clinic and they'll help you. Even right here, right now, there are those who have doubts about Rhode Island's true motives. But at the very least, all of the pub's regulars trust them. By the way, Jim, I saw your wife on the way here. What? what? You sure? Oh, bugger. <clears throat> um, you carry on with the drinks. I just remembered I've got a few errands to run. Um, see you around. <laughs> there goes our king of the castle. Yeah, yeah, off I go. Well... 
We'll do this another time. Be safe on your way home, Mr. James. Unlike most of the people in the establishment, Mr. James is not infected. In Caledon, it isn't uncommon to find non-infected working in the infected community. Ever since the new Caledon, Caledon Infected Act came into place, a lot of the unemployed poor have been risking themselves working in the infected factories. A great majority of them leave the infected community as soon as they get off work. They also avoid coming into direct contact with the infected during working hours. That's understandable. All of us infected have gotten used to the attitude, and no one blames the non-infected workmen for it. Though, still, there are people like Mr. James. Ah, <sighs> there goes my drinking buddy. Come on, Bean. Stop spacing out over there. Have a few pints with me. Quiet down. I'm reading the newspaper. What's the headlines? It's all big news to the last couple of days. The whole town's talking about it. Don't tell me you haven't heard. The new bill, is it? That's some big news indeed. What new bill? The one that's uh, going to improve how us infected workers are treated. Do you ever do anything except drink? This bill is going to be massive for all of us. Ugh. And here I thought I was something that... Uh, it was something that actually mattered. You're naive, you know. I gave up on that uh, Hokum long ago. What, you don't want them to start treating us better? You think the lords actually care about us infected? On your bike. I guarantee you, this bill... Uh, this bill thing's bound to fail. It'll be unanimous even. And then it'll be like nothing ever happened. They're doing this just for show, I tell you. Aha! Uh -huh. Too bad, then. You're wrong. The bill didn't pass, but it didn't fail, either. It was a tie. The final decision is going to have to wait, on wait till next time. I'm still not buying it. It won't pass. What does the paper say, though? What's in that bill, specifically? One second, let me see. I remember some bits and pieces of it back when they announced it. Oh, take a look. It says here that the infected workers cannot work more than 15 hours a day. That's uh, that the factories have to give the infected the same kinds of originium protective equipment as non-infected. <laughs> that'll make me laugh. There is a snowball's chance that's true. What's it saying again? There's no pies in the sky. What would you out letters even know? Me, I'm a bor born and bred Caledonian. I've seen how they do things my whole life. No one knows the nobles how I do. You're still counting on those stingy uh, tosspots to do anything for you out, out of their pockets. Dream on. Ah, you want, you want to at least hold out uh, some hope, keep a positive outlook on things. There's no need to be so negative. Who would have thought that? Thought ten years ago that they passed that New Caledonian Infected Act, right? Now that. That's apples to oranges. Us infected can work their factories and the heads only have to pay us half the money. They got to pocket the other half. Of course they passed that bill. That's true. Oftentimes they don't even pay us with cash, just wage tickets. Things take time. I think you could be more optimistic about it. Keep in mind that Caledon willingly accepts infected from all the city cities out there and uh, even offers work. You don't see that anywhere uh, else in Victoria. I heard from uh, some of the f foremen these policies are what co what Colombian style. Are all the Colombians like this? Well, it's complicated. There's a tiny bit of difference. Whatever. Time for a new topic. Any other news? Let's see. Terror in Caledon. Loud roars heard underground at night. And then... Possible infected smuggling activity spotted in an abandoned district in Caledon outskirts. Then there's also... Public safety in jeopardy. Convicts and wanted criminals have infiltrated the infected community. Why are all the headlines like that? That's the Caledonian Daily. And they're rubbish reporting for you. They love their terrorizing headlines, and they can take care uh, to add, uh, and they uh, take care to add a word infected in there. 
Just thinking, uh, just thinking about those hack uh, journals makes me want to puke. It's true, but you should still be careful, Susie. Caladon hasn't been all that safe lately. <laughs> I'll watch out. Thanks. <clears throat> November 17th, 1097, 8.40 a.m. Fin fillets, potatoes, green onions, I guess that's about it. Oh, and the pepper, too. I just have to deliver these to Mr. Kells, right? Yes, please. On my way. Foreigners go home. Out with the infected. This is our home. Out with the infected. It's the infected's fault. Us porters lost all our jobs. It's not uncommon to find people protesting the infected community here in Caledon. When the city council passed the new Caledonian Infected Act four years ago, a large group of infected migrated to the city for work all at once. But the hostility between the non-infected and the infected didn't improve. Hey you! The infected! The infected there! Get over here! I I'm just walking past. What's that you're holding, eh? It's just... What's that in your basket? Let me see. These are items I'm delivering to a customer. Shouldn't you love be working in the factories right now? What are you wandering around here for? It's part of my job to deliver things to... Who said you could talk back? <laughs> Ouch. Spark. Arts. Bear with it, Susie. Don't fight back. This isn't the first time something like this has happened. What gives the infected the right to walk the streets in broad daylight anyway? It's all your fault. The air here has gotten so pollu poll polluted. Bunch of pests. Go back to the sewers where you belong. But you're the one who came to the infected community. What? Why? What are you looking at me for? Looking for a fight? That's enough, mister. Let's not overdo it. And who are you? The tall masked man helps the feline girl... Uh, oh, sorry. <clears throat> the tall masked man helps the feline girl up and turns around to face the thug. There is no need to lay hands on an unarmed lady now. It's not a way very honorable thing to do, wouldn't you agree? What? She's just uninfected. And what's with you? Trying to be a hero? Well, if you want some, come and get it. Hmm. Coward. Mr. Red. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't have what it takes to offend you, kind sir. Though before you continue, I should inform you that I have Originium crystals on my face. And your punch landed right on one. Uh, what? Oh, sir, this isn't good. Look, I'm bleeding out of my mouth. And your hand is injured. It might just get you infected too. What? But... Hurry, to the, in to the hospital, you can still make it. Damn you, Ursus. You better watch your back. You'll regret this. Enough now, get to the hospital. Um, thanks, Mr. Red. Uh, are you okay? Don't worry about me. I'm used to taking a beating. I could ask you the same. Look at your face. It's all swollen. I I'm okay. I'll put some ice on it when I get home. There have been more anti-infected pr protests here lately. You should avoid this area on your way back. Where are you headed? I'll go with you. Thanks, but don't you have work? I wouldn't want to be a bother. Don't worry yourself. I have errands in the area too. Mr. Red works for a nearby factory and he visits the shop sometimes. He may be from Orsus, but he doesn't like to drink. He prefers to read a book in the shop all by himself. 
the other workers seem to really respect him. They call him the boss man. Uh, but Mr. Red, is that man really going to catch a rip of he? Oh, of course not. You don't get just infected like that. That was only scaring him. A rip of he can spread through blood, but the... But he only had some minor scraps. It's pretty effective as a bluff, though. <laughs> I see. Those bastards. What a load of other scumbags. Laying hands on a young lady, have they no shame? Don't get yourself all worked up. I'm okay. So they ran off after they hit you. Did they see you? Uh, did you see where they went? They ran north, as uh, so my guess is they headed to the, to the boil. The boil, eh? I won't be easy to find them then. In any case, I'll make a note. They've been fairly short-staffed at the guards lately. Does your face still hurt? You need to massage it a bit. <laughs> it's okay, don't worry about me, Officer Granny. It's true how Caledon hasn't been uh, that safe lately, but I didn't expect you to get attacked, Susie. Officer Granny isn't with the local Caledon, Caledon, the Caledon guards. She's a mountain police officer temporarily loaned to the local guards and assigned to the infected community. Of course, the Caledon guards aren't very interested in keeping the infected safe. This short staff business seems to be an excuse, too. Which makes Officer Granny one of the very few local law enforcement officers willing to help the infected. Though just the few of them alone can't solve all the community's safety problems. <sighs> no loss of property and that's filed. This is all I can do for you right now. I'm off now. Come and find me if there's any more trouble. Thank you, Officer Granny. The idiots better hope I don't find them first. What if you do find them? I'll beat the light up life out of them. Think so. The moment you lay a finger, everyone around will start screaming and making a fuss. Then the next morning, the front page of Caledon Daily will read, Infected, ba infected batters innocent citizens. Security problems worse by the day. Oh well... And I remember that rotten boy and his loudmouth. A month ago, he was protesting the crowd in over overalls, complaining how the factory he worked at was shut down because of the infected. Two months ago, he protested with uh, the hawkers and said the infected stole his merchandise. So what is he today? I think he said he was a porter. What in the world? Sounds like someone... Sounds like something the gangs of the Boyle would do. He was probably hired. Now, which lord did we offend again? The infected community has always been a thorn in the side of certain people. As long as the councillors who support a new bill aren't in the majority, these things will keep happening. We'd better keep an eye on... I... <sighs> we better keep our eyes peeled. This prick, though. Forget Susie. He even... F Try to fight you, boss man, and how dare he? Alright, enough. Your pin's getting lonely. <sighs> how am I supposed to drink knowing uh, knowing our little Sparky got harassed? <laughs> You're just exaggerating. Sparky, take this. Uh huh? What is it? It's an ointment that helps reduce swelling. Anywhere it hurts, just rub some out on there and after you wash your face tonight. Huh. Now, how come you've never given me some of that? This is from Yen. You know how expensive it is. Besides, look how rough you are. What do you need it for? Oh, if it's that expensive, I can't take it. No, do. Let's not work a pub with a swollen face. <laughs> This isn't exactly a pop, though. Thanks, Mr. Bean. In that case, your drinks are on the house tonight. Now that's what I'm talking about. Susie, are you sure you have to go? Yes, ma'am. Staying here isn't going to do us any good. No, Susie. Listen to me. I've found another job this month. 
Don't worry about the medicine. We'll figure something out. Please don't. I can't be a burden on the family anymore. Not when my baby brother and sister still have school. And when my big brother... B brothers uh, are all still healthy. I can't let my daughter go to another city alone. Don't worry about me. I heard how the infected working in Caledon get medicine as part of their pay. <sighs> I'm sorry. It's all my fault, Susie. I'm so sorry. I'll take care of myself. Don't worry, Mom. November 18th, 1097. 9... <clears throat> 9.20 a.m. Every now and then I dream of my family. I was born in Washindal, a small town in the northern... Uh, at the northern edge of Victoria. When I was little, back when my father was still alive, he would take our whole family out to picnics. When you're up on Mount Shea, gazing out into the distance, you can even see the vast Casimir Casimirian plains. I've been it's been five years since the last time I went home, but my mother still sends me letters. My family situation has taken a turn for the better since I left. It was difficult to pay all the expenses and infected needs with just my mother and my brother's income. They are living a better life, and that's more than enough for me. Welcome! Look who's here! Uh-huh! Hi, boss! Little Susie! Let me give you an ear... Let me give your ears a good rub. <laughs> boss, that tickles. Mm, boss again. Come on, don't be such a stranger. <laughs> Miss Krakus. Hmm? Krakus. That's more like it. Krakus is a free spirit and also the owner of the shop. Although most people here treat it like a pub, it's actually Krakus's arboretum and a uh, lighting shop. Many have asked us why she would open such a shop in the infected community, and her answer has always been a very simple one. Why open a light lighting shop? Because I want to. That folks right there is the whole thought pro process behind all of these narrations in the channel. Because I want to. <laughs> Sorry, had to say it. That said, Krakus actually spends very little time in Caledon. The shop seems only to be a hobby of hers. In other words, she really meant it when she said she wanted to. She mostly works as a messenger, spending her time busting about in the wilderness. Most people call her the Druid of Gododin. By the way, Krakus's arts are actually very unique. She plants all kinds of strange flora around the shop, and she brewed most of the alcohol we, uh, we sell here herself. She even gave me my staff an arts unit because they can apparently help me control my own originium arts. Uh, why did you come back this time? Did you need something? Oh, am I not allowed to come and see you without a special reason? <laughs> I have something to take care. Uh, what? Have you forgotten? It's almost the end of the year. Oh, right. This is, uh, this is a defining moment for me. I've been saving up money for a f few years now. I want to buy this place. I want to have my own shop here in Caledon. No matter what I do, this will be the beginning of my independence. And Krakos uh, often tells me that the shop's landlord has been thinking about renting to someone else, and that she doesn't have much time to take care of, care of it. So, you've saved, saved up all this? That's amazing, Susie! But, Karkus, are you sure it's okay? Isn't it a bit on the low side for a place like this? How many times have you asked me that now? Do you not trust me? No, I mean, of course I trust you. I'll get you a meeting with the landlord uh, so sometime next week for you to work out the details. 
He's a dependable one. Next week, huh? November 18th, 10.97, 9.56pm. Here's your tea, Miss... Uh, Montbelan. Thanks. Oh boy. Uh, Ethelfled? Was that how we pronounce it? Ethelf Ethelfled. Ethelfled Julie Mont Montbelan is one of our regulars. She's just Miss Montbelan to us. She's another Rhode Island expert. She's in charge of coming up with solutions to solve uh, infected problems for the council. Just like Mr. Root, she got along with our other customers straight away. The Montbellan name is known far and wide in the country, so I still haven't grown completely used to seeing a lady from such a prestigious family having tea around the infected community. Judging by your look, I suppose the lords did something to make you unhappy. Miss Mumbalon takes a sip of tea, both her lips and the blood vessels on her forehead are twitching. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I spent two weeks preparing all that data and they only read a single page of it. Just one page? How short-sighted can they be? The issue is raised. The issues I raised are urgent to the point they need to address it right now. You can't tell me it doesn't worry them one bit. Oh, they don't wor uh, worry about the fire until it started burning them. If this drags on, it will Im immolate them completely. Hasn't the reunion mayhem in uh, Godardin th taught them anything? The flames of reunion Godardin were stomped out two years ago. Why would it be a problem to do, do these noble lords? Things aren't that simple, though. It's as though don't even understand the crux of the matter. Reunion isn't just a band of thugs and bandits. There's a reason they started that uprising. Oi, is it just me or did it get warmer in here all of a sudden? Yeah, I think it did. Not again. Cool it a little. Don't burn my store down. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Calm down, Miss Montbellon. You're off to work. Try to keep a happier face on, I think. Here, give these a try. Oh, what do you have here? Sweets. That's right. Miss Quackers made these vanilla mints herself. Let them calm your rage. <sighs> Thanks. I was on a holiday in Siesta just a few months ago. And now I'm starting to miss the place. It sounds like you've really had it tough, Miss Montpellan. Loosen up some, if you can. At least I have a lot to, lis to listen to. At least I have you a lot to listen to me grumble here. You can't do that at Rhode Island. You think my case is bad? Everyone has it tough there. Kicking up a fuss at work would only hurt morale. Don't worry, we're all a bunch of idiots. By the time you finish a sentence, we've gone and forgotten what you said. So, what concludes the uh, conclusion did the lords arrive at? Well, halfway through the meeting, they started fixating on all these uh, silly, in all those silly rumors. You mean like the sounds of the city underground and criminals have infiltrated the infected community? In the end, it's all the infected's fault, eh? Right. It's all just baseless conspiracy theories. It's a mystery to me who's even been spreading them. Anyway, the meeting devolved into a pointless shouting match after that. It sounds like a lot of the lords support the infected community, though. We do solve a lot of their problems, after all. Some of the lords have made a good bit of dough over the last few years. Likelihood is they are just amenable to it. Uh, to it that most considering they're directly profiting. Besides, the community doesn't only concern the infected anymore. There's plenty of non-infected working here now, right? 
That's true. I'm one of them right here. Right. That's a fair point. But talking about it all here and now won't change a thing. I still have other engagements tomorrow, so if you'll excuse me. Be careful out there. Now, setting that aside. Why are you working here in our community, James? It's strange for me to say, but isn't it a bit risky on uh, on shift with the infected? Risky, eh? Tell you the truth, risks are, in the end, nothing more than an unknown. Putting food on the table, that's the immediate problem. If worse comes to worse, suppose I actually catch a rip fee, my family are still going to live better than if I didn't have a job. I've got two little mouths to feed, I can't just leave it to my wife to be the breadwinner. Besides, it's not like she makes much selling scarves. We would have been a we wouldn't be able to get by. My mom's got asthma. It costs an arm and a leg to treat. My dad's got some serious bone disease too. We can't even get out of bed. I don't have a choice. If only I could find better work. Ah, how come it sounds like your life's more of a mess than mine? Hmm. Why are you so quiet today, Stone? Did something happen? <coughs> How old did James say his kids are again? One's eight, the other twelve. Why? Uh, no reason, just thinking. Come on, if you got something on your mind, just say it. It's not like we're strangers. Did you run into some kind of trouble, Stone? Trouble, huh? <sighs> I got a letter from my wife. She said she'd come and pay me a visit with our daughter. A daughter? A, a daughter? You have a daughter? Eh? I didn't know you were married. What? Is that strange to you? No, not like that. Just an infected having a kid. Oh, don't worry about that. I got a rip of you afterwards. My wife and daughter are fine. Isn't that a good thing? What a long face. Right, you got a ripper fee and your wife didn't abandon you. Wish the missus cared about me like that. <sighs> Look at me. How am I supposed to face them the way I am now? What's wrong with the way you are now? Right, why look down on yourself like that? It's true though, you're not exactly in good shape to see her. Why don't we get you a haircut? You could at least be a little better groomed. Alright, if it's a haircut Stone needs. Brandishes a pair of scissors and a comb. Oh, you beasties! You know how to cut hair, Sparky. Now, don't underestimate her. My girl Susie is a master hairdresser. Ta-da! Well, that doesn't that look pretty good? I don't usually cut it so short. It feels all breezy. Hey, you're looking fresh. I think you can do a lot for yourself if you just... Uh, if you pay just a little more attention to your hair, Stone. <sighs> Look at me, though. My life's a disaster. How am I supposed to find the time to care about my hair? Don't think like that. It's because life's so hard that we should find our own ways to live better. Right, no one's ever said the infected have a life in misery. Chin up, your wife will be delighted to see you like this. Take it slow, you come to my room later. I've got some clean clothes I've been holding on to. I haven't worn them much. Give them a wash and see if they fit. <sighs> you sure about that? What's to stand on ceremony? Just take them. Now, come on, drink up. November 23rd, 1097, 10.35 a.m. Today's the day. I'm meeting the landlord. There's a thick stash, a thick stack of cash in front of me. 6,500 pounds. This amount of money was 
once unthinkable to me. When I was little, one of my brothers broke an originium lamp we had. Mom gave him a really good spanking. That was the first time I, I saw her get that, the, uh, get that angry. She needed a lamp to patrol the mine shaft at night. The lamp was worth a hundred and fifty pounds. It was almost her entire month's salary. That's what got her so angry. How many originium lamps could six thousand and five hundred pounds buy? I assessed the enormity of the heavy, foul-smelling pile of sacrifice before me. All the meals I've skipped over the years, all the hardships I've suffered through. Six thousand five hundred pounds. These sheets of paper are like a bridge I leave myself, brick by brick. On the other side stands my dreams. Susie, get it together. You're just meeting with the landlord. He's just a landlord. From tomorrow onwards, you'll be the shop's owner. Your dream is coming true. You're almost there, Susie. I look in the mirror and give my cheeks a good slap. How should I greet him? Nice to meet you, sir. I'm very glad to... No, the smile's too stiff. My dream is about to come true, but I don't feel uh, the least bit excited. On the contrary, I'm growing more and more afraid of seeing the man about to walk into the shop. The landlord. What kind of person is he? Is he infected or not? Will he really sell the shop to me? He's selling it to me so cheap. Could it be a scam? Is he going to uh, is he doing this because like everyone else he just wants to make fun of me to humi humiliate me M maybe Quercus isn't infected either maybe they're in, the in this together just to ah what am I thinking I smack my face hard I'm using pain to suppress these shameful despicable emotions don't be like that Susie this is hideous I stare into the mirror. The only thing that can be heard inside the quiet shop is the clock sticking. It's like torture. Susie, are you there? Uh, uh? Watch your arts. What's the matter with you? What are you so scared of? Did something happen? Uh, no, I'm okay. Good morning, Miss Quercus. Mm -hmm. Look at those dark circles under your eyes. What's wrong? Did you not sleep well? <laughs> I was a little nervous. Good morning, Miss Susie. Oh, Mr. Root, sorry I didn't see... Ha! Huh? What time is it? Oh, sorry, Mr. Root, we aren't open today. Did you need something? Uh, you haven't told her yet, Quercus. Oh, you're right, I haven't. Huh? I forgot to mention it, but he's the landlord who owns the shop. Eh? Eh? Mr. Root's the landlord? So the previous owner signed their contract with Mr. Root? Uh, it's a long story. Anyway, Rhode Island actually owns this property. A further deal is from Quercus. Miss Susie, you want to buy the store? Is that right? <clears throat> Permit me to ask, then. What kind of business do you want to run here? Bis business Oh, business. Mm. My father was a hairdresser. When I was little, he often said we shouldn't change our attitude towards life just because we're poor. Hairdressing may seem trivial, but if someone's putting in the effort to keep themselves groomed, they, then they must still carry the will to live. That's why I thought it would be nice to open a hair salon in the infected community. Hairdressing, huh? For the infected? That sounds very nice. It's a deal then. So I'm will come to sort out the contract later. Eh? Uh, th that's it? We've known each other for a long time, haven't we? You'll be fine, Susie. My own shop. It feels like I'm dreaming. That reminds me, where will you go now, Miss Quercus? Are you going to leave the city? Oh, don't look at me like that. 
It's not like I won't ever come back. I'll stop by every now and then. I have lots of friends in town, you know? Oh, and one last thing. Susie, Kirk has got you a little gift. A gift, huh? Come, Susie. Everyone's waiting for you. I swear, the round of sound effects that is gonna be playing right now for the next few scenes, I have not edited in. <laughs> Congratulations. You did it, Susie. Uh, Officer Granny, why are you here? <laughs> Jesus Christ, the fucking sound effects. <clears throat> Alright, now Spark is the owner. Make sure you keep the booze we like on the taps. Congratulations, Susie. Mr. Red, aren't you supposed to be working? Oh, we took the day off. We weren't going to miss the uh, moment you took over the shop. That's right. I've been coming here every day for the last few years. I probably know this place better than I do my own home. <laughs> Your wife could give you a good sucking for that. Alright then. Miss Susie, our new owner. The shop is all yours. Oh, why are you tearing up? Don't, don't cry. Yeah, no crying. Life's been hard for all of us lately. It's not often we get something to celebrate, yeah? Cheer up. Anyway, it doesn't matter what you turn in uh, the place into, I'll be here. <laughs> What's this? Tears of joy? <laughs> Miss Krakus, I... Okay, okay, now no more tears. My dream. To the infected, dreams are distant and un unattainable. My dream has always been to have my own shop, my own life. So I wouldn't have to be a burden on my family anymore. And now my dream is about to come true. It's an unimaginable luxury for an infected. Does that make me lucky? November 24th, 1097, 6.35 a.m. Smoke. A thick layer of smoke spreads from a corner of the infected community, breaking the morning tranquility. Evacuate the nearby residents first. You there, quit walling about. Nothing to see here. Over there. The fire is still going. Check again for casualties. This is the infected community. Look for any traces of Reginium, like damaged appliances. Don't let any active dust spread. Bloody hell. Why is something... Why is somebody setting fires around here? But why? Evacuate everyone first. Hey you, feline over there. What are you doing? Smoke. The smoke and scorched stench fill the air. The burning leather and timber crack apart in the lingering heat. Don't run in there, are you daft? Hold her, hold her back! Why? The girl is unwilling. <clears throat> the girl is unwilling to believe what she sees before her. She wants to close her eyes. This has to be a dream. This has to be a bad dream. Right, the moment she opens her eyes, she'll be free of this nightmare. Yes, when she opens her eyes, she'll be greeted by the same old ceiling. A new day awaits her. A new day with her own shop. But the shop before her is nothing but a pile of rubble engulfed in flames of the sign that was once read green spark nothing remains but a few burned fragments it matches the walls and ceilings long since rendered ash before her eyes lies what was once her dreams her hopes and her future all of it now buried 
in this burning rubble. Why? The will that once held the feline girl through countless tribulations can super her uh, can support her small body no longer. She falls to her knees. The scorching ashes burn her hands and legs. The broken fragments cut through her skin. In the ruins of despair, an infected lost everything. And so the blaze is extinguished. Woof. Ah. Oh boy. Woof. Well, that was an ending. <clears throat> but now we continue with the next part. November 19th, 1097, 9.20 p.m. <clears throat> this way. Up ahead. <laughs> Fucking clone up. Clone army is on the march. <clears throat> They're over there still, like, I think I can see her. Wait, didn't we just pass this road sign? We're back to where we were. I mean, we're running in circles. See? I knew it, there's something funny about that feline's arts. Calm down, the infected community's up ahead. The thief's definitely hiding somewhere in there. Damned infected, I'll find them. Even if I have to flip the place upside down. That's enough, let's head back. Are you sure we should just let her go, Chief? What about the money and the merchandise? Forget it. She didn't take that much. We'll all chip in a little. F uh, we'll all chip in a little and foot the bill. The boss made it very clear uh, he didn't want any unnecessary trouble. Give him any more fuss, and a sacking will be the least of your worries. Let's go. <laughs> You'll have to be a little smarter than that to catch a cat. Minnie, you there? Miss Witch. Here you go, your meal and medicine for today. Thanks. Don't eat too fast, you won't choke. You mustn't choke on your own food. A slice of bread and enough rice to stifle her hunger for the day. When exactly did I, did I start helping people? Oh, wait, that's her talking. <clears throat> Pardon. And why? I had enough trouble keeping myself alive. <coughs> Miss, you don't look too well. Really? Is it that obvious? When can I start using Originia Marts like you? Not today. Huh? But I wanna be a witch too, like you. Maybe once you get a little... Maybe once you get a bit bigger, kid. <coughs> sharp pain. The sharp prickling pain of this oripophilia is... Uh, Liaison hasn't stopped hurting for the past three months. Maybe it's time to leave this place. It wouldn't be nice if anyone got caught in the crystallization when it finally happens. No, when the time comes to wave goodbye to this world, it must be done elegantly and in perfect solitude. That's how a proper kitten and a caster from the witch forest is supposed to go. One pub, two pubs, three pubs, seven kits, eight kits, nine kits. Take a guess how many pubs and stray cats there are in this infected block. I know because I counted. 
there are 8 pups and 32 stray kittens. That's 4 kittens to each pup and a fresh fin for each kitten. Have you ever counted how many cities you've visited? How many infected settlements you've seen? I have 5 cities, 8 settlements and 17 prison breaks. I've been to many cities but Caledon is definitely one of the more interesting ones. Everyone's the same. They're out to make a living when the sun goes up and they, they're into the pub to drink when the sun goes down. When they close their eyes at, an, uh, eyes at night, they never worry about what the next day will bring. Infected normals, what's the difference? Maybe one day when a loud kaboom, uh, with a loud kaboom, the whole of Caledon Bay will slip into the sea and that'll be the uh, wonderful end of everything. Which is why if I had to pick a place to die, this wouldn't be too bad a choice. A place where I can look down on the city and my body is turning to stone and then bang nothing left of me no one no one any the wiser but nonetheless I'll have to pick a place that's farther away at least the dust drifts into uh, way down into the streets the rocks in my body seem to have calmed down looks like it's not yet time at least not today until that, that came, ugh. Until that day comes, I always have to think about where I'll find tomorrow's fun. Oh, I didn't even notice. The sun's already up. Good morning, Victoria. Good morning, Caledon. So, who's the lucky contestant who gets a visit from the kitty today? November 23rd, 1097, 10.14 p.m. Not a soul in these buildings here. Is it... Uh, is it how close it is to the abandoned districts? An old warehouse, huh? Maybe there's something we can use. Let's take a peek. Food. There can't be food here, right? Maybe something we can make a fiber or so from? Whoa, whoa. That's a bit of dust. And it reeks of machine oil. Nothing quite adorable here. This vase looks pretty, though. Don't touch nothing. Hmm? I don't get it. Are we. All we're doing is kidnapping a few infected and an old man. Why get everybody all puffed up? Shut up. Do your job and get paid. Don't ask questions. Phew. Counted up the weapons yet? Looking good. Probably overkill for a rickety old counselor. Weapons? Counselor? Boring. Keep your eyes open though. Those goons are hired guns. I don't trust them. What about the explosives? We don't need to worry about the originium bombs. We got guys to handle that for us, not our department. All we gotta do is ready the weapons and arts units. We're good to go in three hours. Then we just wait at the boil till they are done and pick up from there. Who's that? You hear that? Weird, I thought I locked the door. I heard it loud and clear. Someone's in here. Someone, eh? Where? No hiding in a room this small. It's probably just some cat. Yeah, that's it. Just a cat tempting fate in here. Let's see now. Which little kitten came poking her head into a place she shouldn't have? Don't be so petty. Can't a passing stray kit take shelter here for the night? Who are you? And infected. Perfect timing there. I told you, I'm just a stray cat passing by. I wandered in here by chance alone. Won't you overlook? As if I give you this pretty vase. 
What you heard don't, uh, what you heard don't matter. I don't care if you really did stumble it by accident, but now that we found you, you ain't getting out of here alive. Curtains for you, kitten. Haven't you heard? Bad luck befalls those who harm cats. Missed. How she so? What's with the mist? <laughs> What's the rush now? How about I give you two a riddle to chew on? Why is a rock like a firework? You ain't going nowhere. <sighs> this should be far enough. You, a noble's room. The spell always makes me lose my lunch. <laughs> my shoulder. That angry lad's a fair decent shot. At least it didn't nick any bones. Grabs the arrow shaft. Um, miss, who might you be? Hmm? Don't move. Uh -uh. Shh. Quiet. I don't want to kill you. I just need to hide here for a spell. You best work with me here. If you don't behave, this arrow will. Calm down, miss. No need to be so tense. You... you look hurt. Do you need my assistance? Stay back. The black smoke manifested by her originium arts spreads throughout the room. The old man... Ma main? The old man takes a step backwards and falls to the ground. Uh, sir, are you alright? Mm. I'm fine. I'm writing my proposal. Do not disturb me until daybreak. Very good, sir. Miss... <coughs> If my hunch is correct, you should be infected. Don't be afraid, I won't hurt you. I... The elderly, elderly Sabra noble suddenly grabs his chest and lets out a pain moan. What is it? I was just giving you a scare with my arts. Oh, well, there's a bother. Someone help, we have a man down. Oh well. About time to go. Something wrong, sir. I heard a girl... That's her angst. What happened? What do we do now? Shouldn't we just kick in the door and get her? You stupid or something. Don't you know who lives here? It's Councilor Angst's mansion. Counselor, that's like a lord, here of all places. Why would a council live right by the infected? And ain't this house kind of small? Just shut your mouth, we'll figure out another way. There she is. Showing yourselves, uh, showing yourself, huh? Save us the trouble of dragging you out. You too, you're a pain in my rear. Don't even think about it. Get her! She took a hit. She won't go get far. Watch her arts, though. We don't know if they can kill, but they'll definitely mess with our senses. Let's see what she's capable of. It's fogging up again. She's casting. She ducked in here, huh? Green Spark. Some kind of pub. Don't look like it. All these old buildings are pretty much the same. There's no way uh, out but the way she came in. She's trapped. Slow down, no rush. The feline's got some fancy arts. Watch the smoke. Won't be easy to catch her alive or take her down either. And we don't get much uh, time to deal with her. Still got those incendiaries. You wanna burn the place down? 
The buildings around here are packed pretty tight. You sure about that? Hurry up already. Nobody ca cares about the infected, even if it makes a scene. That's just a distraction for us. You think too much. Just get to it. We can't afford to make any mistakes here. We need her done in. Capiche? Gotcha. <laughs> That'll do the trick. Now let's skedaddle. God damn, diseased cat. Maybe made me spend all night running around the city. I hear that uh, when the infected die, they turn to ash and explode. Never seen it for myself, though. Don't worry about that. Let's go. You have to be smarter than that to catch a cat. Listen up, you didn't drive me into this corner. It's only because of my condition. November 26th, 1097, 9.27 a.m. Sharp pain. Her lungs hurt, her stomach hurts, her liver hurts. Looks like normal painkillers don't do a thing anymore. Stricken with pain and disease, the feline girl looks up to the sky through the windows of the abandoned house. A heavy fog shrouded the entire city of Caledon, to the point that the sun's radiance can no longer be seen. From the grey hills of Toron, then Cashire and finally to Caledon. I kept running, wandering the world without aim. My friends all died one by one. And the further I got, the more I lost. Even a dandelion caught on the wind ends up settling somewhere. This kitty's all too tired out. Miss Witch, are you okay? <coughs> Is that blood? It looks like this is the end. Minnie, I have something for you. Do you know how much these coins are worth? Yes. Take one to Grandma Binnie every day and ask her to give you something to eat. And here, the feline which takes a black hat and an exquisite ring. <sighs> The witch's ceremony. Not that it has much meaning left to it anymore. I am Hayes, the 113th witch of the witch forest. May the Grey Hills, Grey Hills sages of the past bear witness to it all. Witness the entrance of a new member to our ranks. Witness the birth of a new soul. Hmm? Do you remember what you asked me to before? Now you're a witch. Really? So I can use arts now? Listen, you've always been able to use arts. You have a gift for it. But when you use them, you need to use this ring, just like I thought you before. Without this ring, you aren't allowed to use Originium Arts. Understood? Yes. Also, you're only allowed to use Originium Arts on bad people. You remember how to tell bad people? How to tell bad people, don't you? Yes. That's good. The feeling which stands up and struggles towards the exit. Miss Witch, are you leaving? Yes. It's time for me to go. November 27th, 1097, 3.47 a.m. The abandoned district on the edge of Caledon. It's the quietest part of the city. Ever since a natural disaster swept across Caledon a few years ago, this district, having fallen into disrepair, was moved to the edge of the city. The crumbling buildings, the collapsed foundations, all of it bore witness to Caledon's history. Gazing out from the top of the abandoned towers, 
there is but a vast, endless wasteland in the distance. <sighs> if I had to pick a resting place, this might be one of the fun ones. I knew this day would come. I can't really say I came up uh, sooner than expected either. The feeling which sits against the wall in a corner and gently closes her eyes. The sharp pain of the Euripophiliasm is starting to fade and her body feels heavier and heavier by the moment. Her memories flash quickly by as though playing back before her eyes. All her witch friends, the gentle great witch Grant, and the night the Victorian soldiers burned the witch forest by their cannon fire. The, the times she spent drifting in the wastelands and the cities, the days she had to steal to get by, and all the unfair treatment she has suffered. None of it matters anymore. It's all coming to an end. Yet suddenly, she hears something so she hears someone sobbing <clears throat> I can't even have my last moment to myself can I now I know this place gets visitors Hayes follows the wailing to another part of the abandoned tower in front of her a feline girl stands next to a window trembling Ah. Hmm. Sorry, I'm so sorry, Mom. I'm so sorry. I I don't know what to do anymore. With a helpless, grief-stricken look, the feline girl totters to the edge of the building. That's a very danger. That's very dangerous, you know. Ah. Who are you? Nobody important, but I do need to tell you a few things before you jump. After you do it, you won't be nearly as adorable as you are now. Honestly, I can't recommend it. Your friends will be awfully sad to see you in the state when they find you tomorrow. Friends, Quercus. The sobbing girl hesitates and steps back from the window. That's better now. What do I call you, little kitten? Susie. Susie Glitter. That's a pretty name. You can call me Hayes. Miss Hayes. Miss Hayes, what are you doing here so late? I was about to ask you the same. This is my personal secret hideout. How did you find it? Oh, well, I can give a cute little kit like you a special permission to play about here, but not if you were com uh, come for a cordless bungee jump, however. Hmm. Oh dear, why are you crying for? No, I... <sighs> it's okay, cry all you want. No one will hear you, so no need to hold it in. Nobody's ever around here, though there's no booze either. It would be nice if we had some, though. Wouldn't it? What I do have for you is free time. Come, have a talk with me. Why were you about to do something so silly? I... I had this dream. I've had it for years. A year's long dream. That sounds lovely. I worked so hard towards it for year, uh, years upon years. It was... I dedicated my whole life to it, and a few days ago, it was gone in the blink of an eye. Somebody destroyed all of it, and I don't even know why. None of it's left. Nothing. How much time do us infected get, anyway? Someone destroyed it, you say? And so the first thing that came to mind was to destroy yourself, too. Seems awfully odd, doesn't it? 
Uh-huh. What do you mean? Well, you said it yourself. Someone destroyed your beautiful dream and your life, life's work. But what are you doing now? Are you trying to destroy the very thing uh, you have? No, that's not it. Show me your hand. Let me see. Uh huh? What are you doing? No crystals. It looks like you aren't too far along. I don't have much. I don't have much of an idea myself. What are you bonking me for? A silly kid with a muddled head. You seems you need some sense knocked into you. Um. <clears throat> Living for a dream. That's quite the luxury for an infected. Most of us are just trudging along aimlessly from the day to that from one day to the next. We don't have that much longer to live. Why tire yourself out with goals and ideals? But you chose to make your dream come true, and that's impressive. There aren't a lot of people like you out there. But you see, so long as you're alive, things will work out. You have more time than you think, not like Ah, I digress. It'd be a shame to give up just like that. But what can I do? I'm sure a cute little kitten like you has lots of friends. Why don't you go and talk to them? You won't get anywhere mulling over it by yourself. If you've lost something, find it. If someone stole something from you, find a way to steal it back. Give up like this and you won't have a single thing left, you know. The bad ones will laugh even harder, and the and that's not fair to yourself. It's the bad ones running your ruining your dreams who should be thrown off the tower, not you. Don't you think? The young feline looks hesitantly at the window. Her face is shrouded in helplessness. Time drifts slowly by in uh, slowly by in the pitch dark of this abandoned tower. She spends a brief moment pondering in silence before finally letting out a long sigh and freeing an exhausted smile. It seems the weight on her shoulders is gone. You're right. Now, if you still feel down in the dumps, just cry it all out. Nobody's around to judge you. No, it's okay. Thanks. That's more like it. The Great Witch says, as long as the sun rises tomorrow, there is still hope. As long as there is... Hey. Uh -huh. Um, Miss Hayes, what's the matter? Be careful. Stay away from me. Miss Hayes, what's wrong? Go. Hurry. What's wrong? Why is your body so hot? Hang in there and wake up! Somebody, please help! Miss Hayes, stay with me. We, we are almost to the city. I can barely carry you anymore. Sorry, I didn't mean you're heavy. You're really, you're really very light. I just don't have much strength. The girl on her back grows weaker and weaker by the minute. She can feel a vibrant life slowly fading away. A wet yet warm feeling gushes onto her back and gradually sp spreads all over. This... what is this? Is it... blood? Dark red blood spills from the girl's mouth and nose, dripping onto the ground. Susie knows what this means. All infected do. No, no, no. Hayes, please, I'm begging you. Ever since she left home five years ago, she's witnessed the passing of many infected. With each death, death she's seen, she's grown increasingly numb to them. This is the fate that awaits all infected. 
but for some reason she finds herself unwilling to bear the pain of this life disappearing before her. Please, Miss Hayes, please, no. Hang on, we're almost there. She sets the girl down to ease her pain. She tightly grabs, grasps Hayes' hand and tries her best to wipe away the blood on her face. Hopeless though it may seem, she tries her hardest to stall the coming of death. Yet death draws ever nearer. It almost seems to come to such a meaningless head. Help! Help! Anyone, please! Help me! Help me! Her low cries pierce through the empty night sky, echoing throughout the empty, abandoned streets. Just then, she heard someone walking slowly towards them. Susie, what are you doing here? Well, all right, this will do it for this first part. Arknights, right? What a warm and wonderful place, full of happiness and uh, sugar and rainbows, right? Oh boy. Well, I have yet to read the rest of the stories, cannot wait to see the dankness. I have seen the animated preview. I know one of them is gonna get bonked. Mm, well, but yeah, that will be for tomorrow. This will be a uh, thing I didn't say it at the beginning, but for those still listening, this will be uh, a daily series until it's done. So three days in a row, basically, roughly. Uh, depends. All depends on how long YouTube takes, as always. But anyway, I hope you all had fun listening to the story totally not despair uh but in the meantime for everyone still pulling on a pink golden keto over here good luck uh mine is being leveled and if you're interested to see how those pulls went well just two updates back from this episode you can see and uh, all i'm gonna say is please don't hate me uh but in the meantime all the best of luck on your polls, and uh, I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.